It's another day when the M25, the motorway circling London, has been brought to a standstill by Just Stop Oil protesters. The Dartford Tunnel in Essex had to be closed and there were further protests in Hertfordshire, Kent and Surrey. When the same thing happened yesterday, Tony Banbury, who lives in Essex, was heading to his dad's funeral. He didn't make it. On the 7th of October, my father passed away. Yesterday was his funeral. Normally, the journey from Aylesbury to Thundersley, where my parents live, normally takes around about an hour. We all got in the car just before 8 o'clock, and I thought, well, the service is due to start at 10.30, giving us at least two and a half hours. Got to the M25 roundabout junction 20. I saw the traffic, and then everything stopped. And the estimated time of arrival at the funeral would have been quarter past 11, and the funeral service was starting at half 10. So we had no choice but to then turn the car around and go back home. I had to ring my uh, mother and explain that we could make it. That was Tony Banbury. Well, the Conservative MP Sir Roger Gale says the protests are unnecessary. I understand and respect entirely the right of people to have their voices heard and to demonstrate peacefully and responsibly. What I don't have sympathy with is those who choose to disrupt the lives of many other ordinary working people trying to go about their daily business in an orderly fashion. That is simply not acceptable. But this case is being made as we speak in Sharm el Sheikh at COP27. That is what that international gathering is all about. It is about climate change. It is about how we use the Earth's resources responsibly. That was Sir Roger Gale. Well, Alex de Koning is a spokesperson for Just Stop Oil. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It's good to have you on. Um, you will have heard Tony Banbury there, who missed his father's funeral yesterday because of the Just Stop Oil pr- protests. What do you say to him? I say that's truly awful. Um, I'm sorry that you've been caught up in that. Um, it's a terrible thing to happen to anybody, and I would be furious too. But the actions that Just Stop Oil are taking are causing these sort of difficulties for people every day. They are indeed, and it's awful that that's happening. And so how can you justify closing the roads? Because our government is behaving criminally, Sarah. They're opening up over 100 new fossil fuel licences, knowing full well what that means for future generations, for people in the global south, for for our crops, for everything. People listening may say, look, what you are doing is behaving criminally. It is, but it's also a proportional response to what's happening in the world right now. What we're doing is very serious because what's happening in the world is very serious right now. But- We've already this year expected to lose half of our potato crop and we've lost a third of our wheat crop already. Our entire fruit and veg um, structure is about to collapse next year because of the droughts we've had this year. It's such a serious issue. It's 2022 Mm. and things are this bad already. Birds have fallen out of the sky during this heat wave. 3,000 people died over the course of just two days. Every year, things are going to get worse. There will be many people who who would agree with and accept everything that you say. Mm. But it's just what you do about it. And whether you wouldn't be more persuasive if you followed other routes, either of protest or of lobbying, whether it is writing to writing to MPs, becoming getting involved in more in directly in politics. Sarah, do you think we haven't tried this? Do you think we haven't been on marches? We haven't signed petitions, we haven't tried running for office? Every year this has gotten worse. Every single year, for 50 years. I'm going to read you a quote today from Rishi Sunak at COP27. When you see 33 million people displaced in Pakistan, with disease rife and spreading through the water, you know it's morally right to honour our promises. Mm. And yet that's not exactly what he's not doing. Do you reckon... He's opening up over 100 fossil fuel facilities. Do you really think that's a good idea, based on where we are in the world right now? Do you recognise, though, there's a danger that you could turn people against your cause because of the way that you're going about it? 
people are not going to stop recycling because of what we're doing. Look, what are you doing to help with the climate crisis? You have such a big platform. Why aren't you telling people about how bad the situation is? And that is, and Alex, that is obviously something that we cover on this programme. Nowhere near enough. There are more fossil fueled air pollution deaths than malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV combined. Mm. I have but never there is heard also, that. But there is also a COP conference going on at the moment that exactly. might be getting coverage, year, I... but for the fact that people are uh, covering local issues with the motorways being closed. Last year at COP26, there wasn't even a mention of oil and gas in the final deal. We don't need fancy words anymore. We need action. There was more oil and gas lobbyists um, at COP26 than indigenous populations on a ratio of two to one. 503 oil and gas lobbyists. And we're still subsidising the fossil fuel industry with £236 million every single week during a cost of living crisis. We need action. We need radical change. Alex de Koning. Thank you very much.